Mastering the Basics of Inco Terms 2020. A Global Your Resource. What are Inco Terms? Inco Terms is short for International Commercial Terms. These were first published by the International Chamber of Commerce, ICC, in 1936. The ICC publishes updates to the Inca terms every once in a while. The latest version of the Inca terms was published in 2019, effective in 2020. The latest set of terms are referred to as Inco terms 2020. Inco terms allow traders to better understand the following. Allocation of costs. Responsibilities. Obligations. Delivery points, and. Transfer of risk. Using Inco terms allows traders to have a common point of reference for operationalizing international trade. This removes the need to negotiate the operational details of these transactions repeatedly. There are 11 Inco terms. X-Works, or, EXW, Free Carrier, or, FCA, Carriage Pay to, or, CPT, Cost and Insurance Paid, or CIP, Delivered at Place, or, DAP, Delivered at Place Unloaded, or, DPU, delivered duty paid, or, DDP, free alongside ship, or, FAS, free on board, or, FOB, cost insurance freight, CIF, cost and freight, CFR. Let's now look at each of the INCO terms. EXW or XWorks puts the most responsibility on the buyer. The buyer will have to pick up the cargo from the seller's premises and handle everything from that point on. This includes arranging for pre-carriage, export customs clearance, arranging for main carriage and so on. Some traders like X works because they believe it allows them to recognize revenue, at the earliest possible instance. However, Inca terms do not define revenue recognition rules. This is the best Inca term to use if the buyer wants to handle everything for a shipment without seller's interference or support. In summary, export clearance is done by the buyer. Freight costs are paid by the buyer. Import clearance is managed by the buyer. Insurance is not required. Any mode of transport can be used with X Works. Delivery point is at seller's facility or named place. Delivery is complete when the cargo is ready for collection by the buyer. Let's now look at FCA, or free carrier. FCA requires the seller to do a little more work than X Works. Delivery can be at the seller's warehouse or another chosen point. If the point of delivery is at the seller's warehouse, the seller will have to load the cargo onto the buyer's collecting vehicle. However, the buyer will still have to make most of the other arrangements, like main carriage and import customs clearance. The seller will be the exporter of record at origin. This is a good inco term to use when the buyer wants to arrange main carriage and requires the seller to be the exporter of record. Under the 2020 version of the terms, FCA specifies that if required, the buyer must request the carrier to issue an onboard bill of lading to the seller. Export clearance is done by seller. Freight costs are paid by buyer. Import clearance is managed by buyer. Insurance is not required. Any mode of transport can be used. Delivery point will be the seller's facility or named place. Let's now look at CPT, or carriage pay to. CPT requires the buyer to pay for carriage to the first carrier, or agreed delivery point. Seller will clear customs at origin as the exporter. This rule is suitable, if the seller has access to cheaper transportation rates. The point of delivery, must be specifically tied down in the sales contracts. This rule is a favorite among traders since it generally allows earlier revenue recognition. However, it must be mentioned, again, that Inco terms, do not specifically define revenue recognition principles. Under CPT, export clearance is done by seller. Freight costs are paid by seller. Import clearance is managed by buyer. Insurance is not required. Any mode of transport can be used. Delivery is made by handing the cargo over to the carrier. Let's move on to CIP, or carriage and insurance pay to. This rule is similar to CPT but in this case the seller must also purchase insurance. This rule is suitable if mandating sufficient insurance of the cargo is a concern. Many traders use CIF instead of CIP. However, CIF is a maritime transport only term while CIP can be used for any mode of transportation. The level of insurance cover under CIP, is more comprehensive than CIF. Like CPT, 
many businesses like CIP, since it supports an argument for early revenue recognition. When using CIP, export clearance is done by seller. Freight costs are paid by seller. Import clearance is done by buyer. Insurance is purchased by buyer for seller's benefit. Any mode of transport can be used. Delivery is made when cargo is handed over to the carrier. Let's look at DAP, or delivered at place. This rule requires the seller to arrange for pre-carriage, main carriage and sometimes on carriage. The seller however, will not be importer of record in the destination. The seller is not responsible for unloading the cargo at the named place. This term is suitable if the seller has access to better transportation rates than the buyer. Under DAP terms, export clearance is done by seller. Freight costs are paid by seller. Import clearance is done by buyer. Insurance is not mandatory. Any mode of transport can be used, and delivery point is the named place. Let's now look at DPU, or delivered at place unloaded. DPU is in many ways similar to DAP. However, when DPU is used, the seller must also ensure that the cargo is properly unloaded as the place of delivery. This rule is suitable, when the cargo is of a nature that requires special handling for unloading that the seller is better equipped to manage. When using DPU, export clearance is done by seller. Freight costs are paid by seller. Import clearance is done by buyer. Insurance is not mandatory. Any mode of transport can be used, and delivery point is the named place. We now look at DDP, which stands for Deliver Duty Paid. DDP is effectively a doorstep delivery arrangement, and the only inco term that requires the seller to be the importer of record in the destination. However, it does not require the seller to unload the goods at the destination. This term is suitable when the seller prefers to handle everything up to the door of the buyer and when the buyer has the necessary equipment to unload the cargo at his or her facility. When using DDP terms, export clearance is done by seller. Freight costs are paid by seller. Import clearance is done by seller. Insurance is not required. Any mode of transport can be used. Delivery point is the named place in the buyer's warehouse. We now look at FAS, which stands for free alongside ship. In FAS, delivery is made when the cargo is placed on the wharf alongside the vessel. Use of this term is uncommon. Although, it may still be relevant when the cargo consists of large and heavy machines or automobiles. The seller must carry out export clearance procedures while the buyer is responsible for import clearance activities. Under FIS terms, export clearance is done by seller. Freight costs are paid by buyer. Import clearance is done by buyer. Insurance is not required. Ocean or waterway are the only allowed modes of transport. Delivery point is alongside the vessel. We now move on to FOB, which stands for free on board. FOB considers delivery to be made when cargo is loaded onto the vessel. However, since the condition of containerized cargo cannot be ascertained at the time of vessel loading, this inca term should not be used for containerized cargo. Buyers should use FOB when they want to arrange for their own main carriage and on carriage. Under FOB terms, export clearance is done by seller. Freight costs are paid by buyer. Import clearance is done by buyer. Insurance is not required. Ocean or waterway are the only allowed modes of transport for FOB. Delivery point is on board vessel. We now look at CIF, which is cost, insurance and freight, similar to CFR. CIF, considers delivery to be made when cargo is loaded onto the vessel, which makes this term also unsuitable for containerized shipments. Traders may find this term suitable, when they are dealing with non-containerized bulk commodities. In this term, the seller has to arrange for freight. Export clearance is done by seller. Freight costs are paid by seller. Import clearance is done by buyer. Insurance is purchased by seller for buyer's benefit. Mode of transport is ocean or waterway. Delivery point is on board vessel. Finally, we look at CFR, which is cost and freight. Similar to FOB terms, CFR considers delivery to be made when cargo is loaded onto the vessel. On that note, this term should not be used for cargo that is shipped in containers. 
This term may be suitable for bulk non-containerized cargo that the seller wants to arrange main freight for. Under CFR terms, export clearance is done by seller. Freight costs are paid by seller. Import clearance is done by buyer. Insurance is not necessary. Mode of transport can be ocean or waterway. Delivery point is on board vessel. If you are involved in international trade, you should take some time to study Inca terms thoroughly. Inca terms determine the obligations and costs allocation related to several other factors that we have not covered in this course, such as packaging, marking, labeling, export licenses, import licenses, port security fees, duties, taxes and vessel loading costs. Visit us at globalia.com for more information, and to download all diagrams, and charts you have seen in this video.